Shalom. We are continuing in our series of understanding Hebrew verb structure. We are working in the perfect or past tense. I hope today that we will finish whatever is left over. Remember that the past tense is indicated by a suffix. These suffixes are listed here. They are always the same. Regardless of the binyan, we will always see these suffixes in the perfect tense. Today we're going to cover the pu'al and the hofal and the hitpa'el. Remember that the pu'al and the hofal are passive voices. That means that something happens to the subject of the sentence. The subject of the sentence receives the action. Remember there is a difference between the tense, which is the past and the present and the future. That is different from whether the verb is active, passive, or reflexive. So an active verb can appear in the past, present, or future. Today we're doing passive verbs. We can see the present tense. The letter is written by me. That's, a, that's an action that's happening now. A past tense, the letter was written by me. That's something that's completed. But it's still passive because the letter is receiving the action of the verb. And it could be in the future, the letter will be written by me. So tense is different than this mood or voice. Again, it is difficult to find examples of these in scripture. So uh, I have chosen this verb, tsari vav he, tsava, tsiva, which means to command. You can recognize this root, I'm sure, from the word mitzvah, which is a commandment. In the active voice, it is a PL verb, but we're going to look at it in the pu'al form. Again, we're looking at a verb that ends in hey, so you know in the perfect tense there's going to be changes that a yud will come in instead of the hey in some of the forms. So, if I was commanded, somebody else gave me a commandment, and I was supposed to do something as a result of that commandment, that form is tsuveti. In pu'al, in the perfect tense, you will have that u vowel under the first letter of the root. Here, because of the of the hey, maybe there's a slight anomaly in the vowel. Don't get confused about the dogish in the vav. This is a grammatical grammatical marking. It does not affect the pronunciation of the vav. And it doesn't make another vowel. Su ve t, and the t, of course, is I was I was commanded. Su ve ta, su vet. In the masculine form, we see in the third person singular masculine, we see the form as it looks in the name of the binyan pu al su va, and the hey comes back. Remember, in the third person feminine, the he becomes a tav, so we have suvta, suvenu, suvetem, suveten, suvu, suvu. So again, this is a bit of a, a reading challenge. As we're reading, we see the tzadi. We look for the vowel. There's a vowel under the tzadi, u. The next thing must be a consonant. There are never two vowels in a row in Hebrew. So then we know we have a vav with a dagesh. Then we say, well, where is the vowel for the vav with the dagesh? The vav with the dagesh is never a vowel. We never say vu out of that one letter. So it's tsu, vu. The first vav with the dagesh is a consonant. And the second, the figure that follows it, even though it looks exactly the same, it is a vowel. It's a shuruk. It says u. Suvu. They were commanded. So here are a few examples. In Leviticus 8, uh, Moses is explaining to Aaron how they are going to be ordained. And he tells them, Petach ohel moed teshvu yomam valayla. In the opening of the tent of the meeting, you will sit day and night, shivat yamim, seven days, Wishmartem et Mishmeret Yehovah, and you will guard the watch, keep the watch of Yehovah, 
below Tamutu, and you won't die. This is all the commandment Moses is giving them. And then he says, Kichen Suveti, because thus I was commanded. Yehovah gave the commandment to me. I'm expressing the commandment to you, but that's the way I was commanded. First person singular, Suveti. In Genesis 45, 19, Pharaoh has heard that Joseph's family has come. Pharaoh has heard that Joseph's brothers are there and he's going to tell Joseph to go get the rest of his family and go up to Canaan and bring everybody down. So it says, Va'ata Tsuveta. There is an extra hey here, some kind of injunctive, encouraging hey, surely, giving it, giving it an amount of emphasis. You are commandment. Zot Asu. Do this and take for yourself from the land of Egypt, carts for your children and your wives. Pharaoh is giving the command to Joseph, and he says to Joseph, you are commanded. Joseph receives the commandment. It's a passive idea. In Numbers 3.16, we see that Moses is taking a census according to the word of Yahweh, al pi Yehovah, ka'asher tsuva, as he was commanded. As Moses was commanded, he received the commandment. This is the verb shalach, which we looked at in, in Hephiel. It means to cast out or to throw far away. So in the passive sense of the hofal, it is the thing which is cast out, the thing which is thrown away. So uh, hofal perfect tense verbs. Of course, they have all the same endings as every other perfect tense, but they start with the hey and the u or the kamats. We're going to see some variations in the text, but it becomes hushlachti, hushlachta, hushlacht, hushlach. Okay, remember it's hofal or hufal, and so we see the verb we see the vowel formation of the third person masculine singular, the same as the name of the binyan, hu fal, hu shlach. And then the feminine ending, hu shlacha, hu shlachnu, hu shlachtem, hu shlachten, hu shlachu, hu shlachu. Here are some examples from Psalm 22:10. David says, David is talking to God. He says, upon you I was cast from the womb. His mother birthed him, and so in that sense he was cast out. The action is happening to David when he's born. The idea is that he's putting his trust in Yehovah from the day of his birth, but here we have this the action of him being cast out or of him being cast out of his mother's womb. In Isaiah 14, 19, presumably talking of the enemy, you were cast out of your grave. So in both these forms, we see that the kamats is used rather than the kibbutz. As we said earlier, the two, two forms can shift, hofal or hufal. In this Ezekiel, 19.12. In Ezekiel 19.12, this is talking about the mothers of Israel, that she was a strong vine, but now due her, to her sin, she is plucked up in fury and cast to the ground. La'aretz hushlacha. She is cast. She's not doing any actions. She's receiving the action. In Jeremiah 22.28, we see a plural form talking about the descendants of Konaniah because of his sin. He is being cast off, and they are being thrown, cast out into a land which they do not know. Hushlechu al aretz asher lo yadu. Okay, we're going to pick up a hitpael form with this verb halach. Hitpael, perfect forms, will have the he tav at the beginning, and then they will have the normal ending. 
Hitalachti, Hitalachta, Hitalacht, Hitalecht. Remember that the name, that the vowels in the name of the binyan, hit pa el. We will see this in the third person masculine singular perfect. Hit halech, hit halcha for the feminine, hit halachnu, hit halachten, hit halachten, hit halchu, hit halchu. In Genesis 20, 24, Genesis 24, the servant is telling his story of how Abraham sent him out to find a wife for his son. By Yomer, and Abraham said, A lie to me as the servant. Yehovah Asher Hitalachti Lefanav, Yahweh the God before whom I walk. So it's the first person, and Abraham is speaking of himself, telling his servant that he's going to send his messenger before him to help him make his way successful. In Ezekiel, 28.14, speaking of the angel who was the seal of perfection, who was in the garden of God, who walked among the stones of fire. Et kruv mimshach, the kruv is a cherub, mashach, you can recognize the anointed, he's the anointed cherub. Hasochech, he's the covering cherub. God says, Nataticha Bahar Kodesh Elohim. I placed you in the holy mountain of Elohim. Betoch of Neesh Hitalachna. Hitalachta. You walked among the stones of fire. In Genesis 6 9, a verse you know, it's speaking of Noah. These are the generations of Noah. Noah ish tzaddik. Noah was a righteous man. Tamim hayab doratav. He was perfect or complete in his generations. Et ha Elohim. So this et is not a direct object marker. It's the preposition with. There are two forms for with. Et and im. With Elohim. Hitalech noach. Noah walked with Elohim. So this is a segol instead of a tzeri. Try not to have a meltdown about it. In Zechariah 1.11, speaking of the horses with the riders that have been sent out to look throughout the earth, they have given a reply to the Lord's messenger, and they said, Hitalachnu ba'aretz, we have walked through the earth. One final form, the third person plural, Jacob is blessing Joseph. Ha Elohim Asher Hithalchu Avotai Lefanav, the God before whom my fathers walk. He names his fathers Abraham Vitzchak. Ha Elohim Haroe Oti, the Elohim who shepherded me. Me Odi, from whenever I was until this day. And then he goes on to bless Joseph's sons. Pray that the same Elohim would bless you. We are finished with the perfect tense. Hallelujah. I hope the paradigms have sunk into your brain somewhere and that you feel comfortable in recognizing them. Till we move on to the future, the imperfect tense. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.